Believing that money distorts our relationships with the natural world and with one another, Mark Boyle set out to live for a full year without making any use of money at all. A year later, to his surprise, he found that he was happier, healthier, and more content than he had ever been. He wrote a book called The Moneyless Man and used the royalties to start a movement called Free Economy, which utilizes an online site to present the philosophy of moneyless living and to provide a clearinghouse where members can connect with other members to share skills, possessions, or accommodation. It's now used by people in 162 countries. I just happened to move over to um, the UK and um, got a job in an organic food store and that put me into contact with lots of kind of green thinking people, you know, people who are questioning things. Um, you know, I'd heard of earthworms and the, you know, bees and stuff for the first time after having studied economics for six years. Um, I'd never actually once come across kind of real life economics. Um, and so it made me question everything about the way we were living um, and the monetary system. And I got to the point in 2006 where um, I was trying to think, what am I going to dedicate my life to? Like, what's, there's so many big issues in the world, you know, from sweatshops to factory farms and ecological destruction, like, which is going to be my passion. And I realised that, that these were all just symptoms of a deeper root cause. And for me, that root cause was our separation from the things we consume, our separation from nature. Um, and until we reconnect um, with what we consume and with the natural world, then very little is going to change. And I had a, another kind of moment of realization that one of the biggest disconnecting um, tools that we have is is money. You know, it, it gives us the illusion of independence. You know, we all we all kind of want to be independent. You know, it's something we're taught from an early age. It's a good thing to be independent, but what we're actually really doing is just becoming dependent on people far away from us. Um, it's not like any of us could survive by ourselves today. We all you know, buy our stuff from across the world. Um, and instead, we're, yeah, we're dependent on those people as opposed to people in our local communities. And that's, that's also led to the destruction of community. So, um, so I just explored that for a while. And, um, and I realized after speaking out about the the consequences of money. We speak always about the benefits of money. It's every day in the papers. But what we don't talk about is the consequences. And um, I realized that actually there's no point in me talking about these consequences if I don't actually start to live it myself first, to see how it feels as a human being to live without money in a world that's pretty much driven by it. So um, I made a commitment to for one year um, to live without money. By the end of it, my biggest, my biggest problem was, can I go back into the monetary world? Um, and it was a real struggle for a few months. Um, and I just realised I've never been happier. Like it's, like, um, and this is part of our conditioning, you know, because it was that, that's why the struggle was so, so hard. I was still conditioned into thinking, oh, of course I've got to go back into using money. And I thought, well, do I? And um, and so I continued doing it um, after the first year. Um, and it's, it has been the best experience of my life in, on so many different levels. You, know, you lived in a, in a caravan uh, that you acquired essentially for free, right? Yeah. How did that happen? So I got the caravan off um, a project called Free Cycle, which many people will be aware of. It's, it, it, it basically takes things that people don't want um, and they post them and people who do want them um, can you know, accept them and vice versa. Um, so sometimes I'll give away things on free cycle, and if I need something, I'll post something there. Um, and I just I decided to live without money one day, and thought, okay, where am I going to live? And I just went on and posted, you know, wanted some kind of living um, situation, like a yurt, you know, caravan, tent, anything. And a woman just um, emailed me back and said, I've got a caravan that is costing me twenty five kuru a month to store in a yard and I'm never going to use it again so do you want it and I was like seriously like okay but that is one of the criticisms you had isn't it that that people sort of said well it's only possible for you to live in this in this uh, um, dreamy moneyless world because you're completely surrounded by all kinds of things that money has bought for other people right and yeah that, that is there's many criticisms actually and um, that's one of them <laughs> <laughs> but I uh, yeah, like it's, I accept the criticism like I do all the criticisms, you know, and there's always, um, 
usefulness in those criticisms. So it's, it's not like you need money to be in this world. The problem is that we've created a world um, conveniently for a lot of people that involves um, us having to use it, you know. Um, and the more you look into kind of anthropological studies and the whole history of how money was created, you know, and in different parts of the world, the more interesting and darker that becomes. Um, and yes, of course, given the way we live today, where you've got, you know, you've almost got to pay to be on the earth, which is a bizarre thing when you consider no other species. Like we, you, know, you need planning permission to be in the countryside, you know, to build yourself a simple dwelling. Like we don't ask that of a bird or an otter or a badger. Um, why do we ask it of ourselves? You know, why can we not be part of that landscape? Um, then, yeah, when you're within the story we live in today, then of course, you know, it's um, there's there's an inherent hypocrisy. Um, that can be perceived. But I think that's only because we live in a bizarre story. I think the idea of actually living without money is much older than us. You know, 95% of our time on Earth here has been moneyless. Um, yeah, it's, it's, it's in the last 5% that, that we've really um, thought that money was to be all and end all. Mark Boyle, the moneyless man. For The Green Interview, I'm Silver Donald Cameron. See you next time.